According to the InterNACHI Home Inspection Standards of Practice, the home inspector shall inspect the main water supply shutoff valve, the main fuel supply shutoff valve, water heating equipment, including temperature pressure relief valves, interior water supply, including all fixtures and faucets by running the water, all toilets for proper operation by flushing them, all sinks, tubs, and showers for functional drainage, the drain waste and vent system, and drainage sump pumps with accessible floats. The inspector shall describe whether the water is public or private, the location of the main water shutoff valve, the location of the main fuel shutoff valve, the location of any observed fuel storage system, and the capacity of the water heating equipment, if labeled. The inspector shall report as a need of correction deficiencies in the water supply by viewing the functional flow in two fixtures operated simultaneously, deficiencies in the installation of hot and cold water faucets, active plumbing leaks, and toilets that were damaged, were loose, or leaking, or had tank components that didn't operate. So we're gonna start 3.6, the plumbing portion of the inspection. The standards tell us to start the inspection at the main water shutoff. We are required, if accessible, to state what the main line is and where the shutoff is. So this is a three quarter inch copper main line. We have the shutoff valve is in the basement bedroom. So that's what my report would say. We actually take a picture of it. That is the only picture in the report that does not relate to a defect. If we have a newer house or a house using a cold water ground, we will typically see a ground wire here. So that's part of the electric, but this is where we start to look. If it's a plastic water line coming into the house, of course we can't use it for a ground. Above it, you're not required to remove all these. So we wouldn't have known which one was the main, but if they're right next to each other, I'll typically look at both of them. This is actually the shutoff valve for the sprinkler system. If you look close, the main water shutoff is a ball valve. On this house, the sprinkler system is a gate valve. Gate valves are still legal, still are okay. Most builders prefer a ball valve. They have less chance to leak, but uh, you will still see gate valves on your inspections. Plumbing, we looked at the main water shutoff. Now we go to our fuel system. On this house, we have natural gas. So we have a meter. Here's our diaphragm. We should have a disconnect or a shutoff before the meter. On this house, it's actually kind of buried in the mulch. I found it, but it's not supposed to be under grade like that. So I would definitely put a note in my report. You know, the fuel disconnect was at grade, maybe inaccessible, snow weather or something like that. But you're not required to dig it up. If this had been dirt, I definitely wouldn't have done that. But it's right here. That is how you would shut off the gas to the house if it's needed. Again, we are required to tell where that is. Exterior of the house near the gas meter. Now we'll go in the house and we'll look at the water heater. Okay, just coming from the uh, fuel. Now we're gonna come over to the water heater. As we look, we can tell this is an 80% efficient water heater because of the metal flue. We do wanna make sure we look at our riser or our draft here, make sure that its color matches the water heater or if it's galvanized like this because this is a calibrated bleed. This one's not quite plumb, so I would put it in my report. Whoever did it should have added on to this line to make it a little bigger, but uh, so they are contacting. Sometimes you might get a knock or a noise when the water heater kicks in because of that. So we're gonna look at our flue. This is a double wall flue. We're supposed to have an inch clearance to combustibles, so I'm gonna write up that it's too close to combustibles in the basement. We need to look at our temperature pressure relief or our Watts valve. Do we have an approved or copper metal, can be uh, plastic if it's the right plastic, extension pipe, terminates about six inches from the ground and at a safe location. We have a floor drain over here, so that would be considered a safe location. Right here is the data tag. We can look at this and find out the age of the water heater. This water heater is a new water heater. It's a 40 gallon water heater. So looking at this, 
new water heaters, most jurisdictions are now requiring an expansion tank or an expansion valve. We don't have one because our main water valve, shutoff valve, did not have a regulator. Some jurisdictions don't require it because if the water gets heated up, it can still push backwards. If there was a regulator or a backflow at the entrance to the house, we would need an expansion tank. As we're looking, if it would damage the house, we'd also need a catch pan. But since we have a concrete floor with a drain, we don't need one. Here's our gas shutoff. And again, the drip leg on this one functions both for the furnace and the water heater. We have to have a shutoff on the cold water. We are also required to look for evidence of backdrafting, which would be our exhaust coming into the house. When they had the rubber bushings or gaskets down here, it's very easy to look and see, do we have backdrafting? These both look terrific. So it does not look like we have spillage into the house. Sometimes you will also see a burnt or corrosion on just the inside of one of these fittings. That would also be an indication we're backdrafting into the house. Now, looking here, we also need combustion. Whenever we have a furnace or a water heater, anything that burns gas, we need to have oxygen for the unit. When we're in with proximity to the dryer, most jurisdictions, and we're not code, but basically it says, if the operation of a dryer can affect the operation of an appliance, you're required to have outside combustion air. The furnace has its own combustion air. The water heater does not. So I would write this up as a defect that we don't have outside combustion air because we are so close to the dryer. So whenever the dryer, whether it's gas or electric, is on, it pulls oxygen through the house. We don't want it to pull oxygen containing exhaust gases from the water heater. So uh, the issue I see here is a lack of combustion air or outside combustion air for the water heater. Now we'll start looking at supplies. So our bathrooms, our kitchen, all of our faucets, things like that. We're done with our water heater. Okay, now we're coming to the bathrooms. So we're gonna start running our water. When we come in, we turn on the hot water at our sink. When we come up to the toilet, when these are in the way, we move them, but we always push against the toilet to see if it's loose. We also want to see if they've caulked, if they've caulked all the way around the, the uh, toilet. We don't want to see them caulk the whole thing because if the wax seal leaks, we want to see it come out. Since this is in a basement, or this is the basement bathroom, and it's on concrete, and on concrete, they allow you to caulk it all. So, our hot water's hot, cold's cold. So, we're gonna let it run and see what we have for leaks. Now, we run a lot of water. I wanna see water in here. I wanna put a couple inches of water anyway in the bathtub. If it is a shower, we do not plug the stopper and do a, a water test of the uh, shower pan. It is not required for international standards of practice. In fact, it's discouraged because a lot of times if it does leak, you will damage the house. Then you are responsible. So do not do a water test on a shower. Just run it as normal, which is open up the faucet. So, our stopper is holding. So we will take a picture of the water in there. I'm checking, I don't find any leaks. Now underneath here, typically we want to see water shutoff valves for the hot and the cold. Older houses, it was not a requirement. If we have PEX with a manifold, it's not required. But on most houses, you will see individual shutoffs. Same thing at the toilet. We want to see an individual shutoff there. We want to see the toilet tank within two inches of the back wall. Otherwise, we're tendency to get leaks. Want to make sure it flushes correctly. So our hot's hot, our cold's cold. We want to make sure our shower diverts correctly. Turns off our water down here. So we have a couple inches. So now we're going to turn this off. So the drain stopper is holding. On this one, it's a plastic, so we don't have tile, grout, things like that to look at. But, uh, you know, so now I will drain the water. 
look at the caulking down here. On our electrical portion, we would check our GFCI outlet, things like that right now. But on the plumbing, when this drains, we're done with this bathroom. We always like to come back to the water heater after we run hot water in the bathroom because I want to hear the water heater in operation. Right now it's functioning. This is where you'll get the knocks if it's full of sediment, different things like that. Now, this water heater has an electronic ignite just like most newer ones. Remember, home inspectors do not, should not, are not required to light pilot lights. Now next to this is a washing machine. Sometimes, if there's nothing in here, we will run the washing machine to check the plumbing, but standards of practice say we are not required to inspect washing machines or their connections. Most home buyers expect us to, but our standards of practice say we do not. So if you do do it, you are going beyond the standards of practice. Just remember that. Okay, now as a home inspector, we are required to check functional water pressure. We're not required to put a gauge on, but to check our functional water, we turn on cold at the, the bathroom sink. We'll turn on cold at a bathtub. This is a, one of our biggest water usage. And then we'll flush the toilet and see if we see a drop. On this house, we're not seeing a drop in water pressure. So that would pass a functional water test, water uh, volume test. So that's how we do it. And you are required to check, have two operate at the same time to check for our water flow. Okay, now we're gonna look at our kitchen plumbing. Just like bathrooms, we wanna check all our faucets, make sure that hot is hot, cold is cold. So, first thing I do is I put it on hot. We wanna check both sides. We're gonna open our cabinet, let it get hot. Down here, now dishwashers are not part of a standard of practice. But because there's plumbing, we typically look at them. Understand you are exceeding the standards. We don't have anything about dishwashers because every house doesn't have one. But we're going to look at how our waistline is coming. This one actually hooks up to the disposal. Because this is a newer dishwasher, there's a high loop built into it. Otherwise, that line would be wrong because there's not a high loop built into the waistline. Looking at our plumbing coming down here. Now, I like to try and get a look at it, but remember, we don't need to move everybody's stuff. So, we don't have any leaks there. Now we'll come over to this side and check it. Make sure our slope is correct. Make sure we have one P-trap, not two. We're gonna reach your hand up, make sure that we have a clamp on our disposal wire. Looking at the plumbing here, we actually, they could have put a high loop, or a standpipe on the dishwasher, because it is, is set up for one. Then we'll go back over. We'll turn on the disposal, make sure it runs. Make sure all functions work there. We don't have any leaks. We didn't have any leaks underneath. We'll turn it off. Now our reporting should state that the plumbing was not fully visible due to the occupant's belongings because there was a lot of stuff under here, which is pretty typical on an occupied property. Okay, in conclusion to our plumbing, remember, a home inspector is not required to light pilot lights. You do not turn on and off shutoff valves, the main water shutoff, etc. We visually inspect them. Don't turn off valves at the toilet, things like that, because eventually you will have a problem. Standards of practice say we do not. We also do not, are not required to operate sprinkler systems. We do inspect attached plumbing, such as the backflow, but anything else is under grade, so you should not operate sprinkler systems. If you do understand, you are going beyond the standards of practice. So by looking for leaks, we're required to report active leaks, corrosion, etc. Poor water flow, where we run multiple appliances we're not required to check actual water pressure with the gauge. So the big thing is don't do shutoffs. You know, don't turn things on or off, except for faucets that are made to be operated normally. So that's concluding 3.6, the plumbing section. Now we're gonna move on to the electrical 3.7 of the report.